بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو مائی یوٹیوب چینل ڈائیورسٹی آف پلانٹ سون ان دس چینل یو ول گیٹ ایوری انفارمیشن ریلیٹڈ ٹو پلانٹس اینڈ دیئر ڈائیورسٹی تھرو آؤٹ دا ورلڈ بفور اسٹارٹنگ دس ویڈیو آئی ریکویسٹ یو آل ٹو پلیز سبسکرائب مائی یوٹیوب چینل دس چینل نیڈس یور اسپاٹ ان دا فارم آف یور فیڈ بیکس کمنٹس subscription and likes today's topic of my video is about morphology of stem i have divided this video in three parts and today i will discuss its part one i hope that you will enjoy this video so let's start the video first of all i will discuss about the definition of stem definition of stem stem is usually the above ground erect ascending part of the plant body that develops from the plumule bear leaves and flowers grows by means of a terminal bud and shows distinction of knots and internodes the knots bear leaves having axillary buds The leaf bearing part of the stem or its branch is called shoot. Stem branches are exogenous in origin. Young stems are green, soft and pliable. Older stems are dark, brown, hard and woody. The main stem is the portion of the primary axis of the plant. which develops from the plumule the portion of the stem bearing the leaves is termed as shoot a branch is also a shoot it consists of an elongated axis with its own set of leaves the part of the stem from which a leaf arises is called a knot while the portion between the two successive knots is termed as a internodot buds and flowers are also born on the stem morphology of stem so this is stem and its part and the parts of the stem are knots internodot leaf and petiole as shown in the figure So next I am going to discuss about the characteristics of the stem. The characteristics of the stem are as follows. First is stem develops from the plumule of the embryo. Second, stem is generally the ascending part of the plant axis. Third, it bears a terminal bud. for growth in length fourth the stem is differentiated into knots and internodes fifth the stem knots possesses dissimilar appendages which are called as leaves sixth the young stem is green and capable of performing photosynthesis seventh in the mature state it bear flowers and fruits eight leaves and stem branches develop exogenously ninth stem exposes leaves flowers and fruits to their most suitable position in the aerial environment for optimum function tenth here if present are commonly multicellular 11th stems are usually positively phototrophic negatively geotrophic and negatively hydrotrophic next i am going to discuss about the branching of stem branching of stem unbranched stem is called the cortex or columna for example in palm sugar cane and meals 
branching of the stem is of two types which is dichotomous and lateral so dichotomous branching is quite rare in angiosperms so first i'm going to discuss about the dichotomous branching in dichotomous branching the growing point get divided into two in the region of branching for example d dictyota and alga and marchantia a bryophyte so dichotomous branching is rare in angiosperms for example asclepias seriaca and pandanus scrupine and the next is hyphen a palm so if a stem divides at its apex into two branches which grow at equal rate of the growth and each of them divides in the same manner the branching is called as the dichotomous for example in scrupine it is very rare among angiosperms so next type is the lateral branching in the lateral branching the growing point does not get divided if the branches arise from the side of the stem usually in the axil of the leaves the branching is known as the lateral the lateral branching is of two types so this is the branching of the stem you can see in the first figure this is dichotomous branching and the next is the lateral branching so dichotomous and lateral branching of the stem as shown in the figure lateral branching is of further two kinds which includes the racemous and cymos so first type is the racemous in the racemous or monopodial branching the terminal bud continues its activity indefinitely the lateral branches are born over it in an acropetal succession for example the older towards the base and younger towards the tip the lateral branches do not compete with the main axis for example in pinus in eucalyptus and in cassiorina and the next is the polyelthia which is also known as ashok tree the stem continues to grow at its apex and gives off the lateral branches which do not exceed it in size the branches are arranged in acropetal succession younger near the apex while the older towards the base for example as in brassica and larkspur and bombyx next type is the cymos branching in cymos branching the terminal bud after forming a small portion of the axis either stops its activity or gets modified into a flower tendril and thorn etc so further growth of the axis is continued by one or more axillary branches the stem stop its growth after some time and gives off two or more lateral branches below the apical bud this cymos branching may be uniparous if only one branch is given off at each branching or biparous if two branches are given off and multiparous if more than two branches are given off so this is the branching of the stem in branching of the stem you can see in this figure in figure a you can see this is the dichotomous in dictyota in the second figure b you can see that this is the racemous branching of the stem which includes the terminal bud leaf and branch as shown in the figure 
so again in the branching of the stem you can see that this is the racemous branching of the stem and the racemous branching includes the shoot tip and which is also known as apex second portion is the main stem and third is the lateral branch as shown in the figure so according accordingly it is of three types the first type is the uniparous and which is also known as monochaetio so when the terminal bird stops its activity further growth is continued by a single axillary branch soon its bird also stops growth and the process is repeated the main axis is formed by the fusion of bases of axillary branches and the main stem it is called as the sympodial axis and which is also known as sympodium the successive branches may develop on the either both the sides when it is called as the scorpioid for example in grape vine or on one side only when it is known as the helicoid for example in the saraca in grape vine the leaf opposed the tendrils re represent the modified tips of the branches the bases of which have fused to form the axis the uniparous cymos branching may again be of two kinds and the first type is the scorpioid in this type of branching the main axis ceases to grow after producing a branch in the axil of the leaf on one side and this branch in turn ceases to grow and gives off the branch on the opposite side in this way the branches give an zigzag appearance usually the basal portions of the successive branches become straightened out and form a compound central axis which is called as sympodium for example you can see in the solanum nigrum and the second kind is the helicoid in this type of the branching the main axis ceases to grow after giving a branch on one side and this branch develops another branch on the same side the successive branches are developed on the same side in the similar manner the main axis present a coiled appearance and usually the basal portions of the successive branches straighten out to form a compound central axis the upper portions of the branches at the nodes become displaced and come to lie opposite the leaves and all the leaves lie on the one side of the axis while the branches on the other for example in grape vine so branching of the stem in this figure you can see that uniparous or monochaetial branching of the stem in the figure a and b you can see that this is the helicoid branching and this is sympodial axis and in the figure c and d you can see that this is the scorpioid type branching and this is sympodial axis of scorpioid type as shown in the figure so the next type is the biparous or dicasio so after the stoppage of growth or modification of the terminal bud further growth is continued by two axillary branches the process is repeated the axis is multipodial for example in viscum which is also known as the mistletoe and next example is the saline and next is the corista corandus vernacular name is the Caronda and the next example is the Mirabilis jalapa which is also known as four o'clock plant next branching is multiparous or 
polycasio so after the stoppage of growth by the terminal bud growth is continued by a wall of three or more axillary branches the axis is multipodial for example in euphorbia helioscopia and the next is e tirocle proton so in this figure you can see the branching of the stem so the racemos first figure is the racemos indefinite branching and the second figure is cymos definite branching so cymos definite branching includes the uniparous and biparous and the uniparous branching includes further two types which are scorpoid and helicoid branching as shown in the figure in the first figure you can see that this is indefinite racemos monopodial branching and which includes the shoot tip and apex main stem and lateral branch but in the cymos indefinite branching you can see that it is of two types uniparous and biparous uniparous is further divided into two types which are scorpoid or zigzag branching and the second kind is helicoid or helix and this is the biparous branching which shows the dead shoe tip as shown in the figure so again in the branching of the stem you can see the different types of the branchings so first is the biparous sign second is the trichesium and the third is racemus branching next figure is uniparous corpoid sign and which includes the pseudopodium and the next figure is the uniparous helicoid sign and this also includes the pseudopodium and in the next you can see that this is the dichotomy this is the helicoid dichotomy which includes pseudopodium and next is corpoid dichotomy which also includes the pseudopodium as shown in the figure in the branching of the stem you can see further in this figure the figure a shows about the biparous or dicasio branching of the stem and in the figure b you can see that this is the multiparous or polycasio branching of the stem as shown in the figure next i am going to discuss about classification of flowering plants the flowering plants are classified according to the length of their life into first type is the annuals such plants which grow for one growing season and new plants are produced by the seeds formed by these plants examples are poppy tomato rice wheat etc second type is the biennials such plants which live for two growing seasons and during the first season they develop leaves on the short stem and store food in their roots and during the following season they develop the flowers and fruits examples are radish turnip beet and carrot third type is the perennials and these plants live for many years and produce the seeds annually for example all woody plants so according to the size habit of growth and soft and woody nature of the stem the flowering plants can be classified into first type is herbs these have soft stem and are small in size annuals and biennials like the mustard poppy radish turnip are all herbs while the some perennials such as the mint ginger are also herbs second type is the shrubs these are woody plants and are larger than herbs and these are bushy in nature and their stem branches at or near the ground examples are rose and jasmine third type is trees these are tall woody perennials with a main trunk from which the branches arise 
and examples are mango, pepper, and banyan. The trees may have one of the following forms. So first form of the tree is the columna. The main trunk is unbranched and cylindrical and possesses a crown of leaves at the top. Example is the palms. Second form of the tree is the excrement. The main trunk is branched and has maximum got at the bottom tapering gradually towards the apex the oldest branches are larger in size and are present near to the ground level whereas the younger ones lie near the apex example is polyeltia third form of the tree is the dalacrescent the main trunk after growing for some distance from the ground divides and redivides into a large number of branches which spread irregularly all around the top. For example, mango and banyan. So classification includes the examples of annuals, poppy, tomato, rice and wheat. These are the examples of the annuals as shown in the figure. So classification also includes the examples of the biennials which includes the radish, turnip, beet and carrot as shown in the figure. So classification also includes the examples of the perennials which includes all woody plants as shown in the figure. So classification also includes the examples of the herbs which are mustard, poppy, radish and turnip as shown in the figure. Classification also includes the examples of the herbs which also include the mint and ginger as shown in the figure. Classification includes the examples of the shrubs which are rose and jasmine as shown in the figure. Classification includes the examples of trees which are mango, pepper and banyan as shown in the figure. Classification includes the examples of the columnar trees which are palms as shown in the figure. Classification includes the examples of excrement trees which are polyeltia as shown in the figure. Classification includes the examples of deliquescent trees and the examples are mango and banyan as shown in the figure. Next I am going to discuss about the types of stem. Types of stem. According to form and nature, the stem can be distinguished into the following types. First type is the herbaceous, soft and green and can be easily broken or bent as in brassica. Second is woody, hard in texture, for example in the calotropis. Third is fistula, internodes hollow. For example, in the bumbo. Fourth is jointed, swollen at knots, as in grasses. Fifth is succulent, thick and fleshy, as in apentia. Sixth is the spiny, with the spines or thorns on the surface, for example, in the acacia. So types of the stem includes the examples of the herbaceous stem is the brassica as shown in the figure. Types of the stem includes the example of woody stem which is calotropis as shown in the figure. Types of the stem includes the example of the fistula stem which is bamboo as shown in the figure. 
types of stem includes the example of the jointed stem which are grasses as shown in the figure types of stem includes the example of succulent stem which is apentia as shown in the figure types of stem includes the example of spiny stem which is acacia as shown in the figure so next i am going to discuss about the birds birds are young shoots with the short internodes and small leaves which overlap one another to form a compact structure if a bird is present at the apex of the stem or branch it is called as the terminal bird and if the bird develops on the sides of the stem it is termed as lateral bird the lateral bird may be axillary if it develops in the axil of the leaf as in rose and sunflower or accessory if more than one bird appear in the axil of the leaf the central one is called the accessory for example in the apricot or it may be adventitious if it develops from the other parts of the plants such as the roots leaves etc as in the begonia from leaf and bryophyllum from leaf and shisham from roots the birds in which no protective scales are developed are called as the naked birds the birds may be leaf birds which develop into leafy branches and floral birds if these unfold into flowers or mixed birds if these contain both leaves and flowers for example in apple and grapes so next is the bulbuls the bulbuls are the birds which become large and fleshy due to stored food present in their leaves for example in lilies onion garlic and agave so these are the birds birds of the plants are shown in the figure so these are the bulbuls as shown in the figure so these are bulbuls on the lilies as shown in the figure these are bulbuls on onions as shown in the figure so these are bulbuls on the garlic as shown in the figure so these are bulbuls on the agave as shown in the figure so next i am going to discuss about the types of birds birds different types of the birds are shown in this table you can see the types of the birds so birds are divided by their location by their status by the morphology and by function into different types by location the birds are divided into three types which are terminal axillary and adventitious by status the birds are divided into three types which are accessory pseudo terminal and dormant by morphology the birds are divided into four types which are scaly covered hairy and naked by function the birds are divided into three types which are vegetative reproductive and mixed birds as shown in the figure so birds are often useful in the identification of plants especially for woody plants in winter when leaves have fallen so birds may be classified and described according to the different criteria by their location by their status by morphology and function botanists commonly use the following terms for location terminal when located at the tip of the stem apical is equivalent but rather reserved for the one at the top of the plant axillary when located in the axil of a leaf lateral is equivalent but in some adventitious birds may be lateral too third is the adventitious 
when occurring elsewhere, for example on the trunk or on the roots. Some adventitious birds may be former, axillary ones, reduced and hidden under the bark. Other adventitious birds are completely newly formed ones. For status, accessory. For secondary birds formed besides a principal bird, axillary or terminal. Resting. For birds that form at the end of the growth season and which will lie dormant until the onset of the next growth season. Next is dormant or latent. For birds whose growth has been delayed for a rather long time. The term is usable as a synonym for resting but is better employed for birds waiting undeveloped for years and for example the apicormic birds. Next is the pseudo-terminal. For an axillary bird taking over the function of a terminal bird, the characteristic of species whose growth is symposial. Terminal birds dies and is replaced by the closer axillary bird. For example, beech, persimmon, planta, plantanus have the symposial growth. For morphology, scaly or covered and this covered one is also known as the perchulate. When the scales also refer to as the perule, in Latin this is called perula or perulae, which are in fact transformed and reduced leaves, the cover and protect the embryonic parts. Next is the naked, when not covered by the scales and hairy when also protected by hairs. It may apply either to scaly or to naked birds for function vegetative if only containing the vegetative pieces embryonic shoot with leaves a leaf bird is the same reproductive if containing the embryonic flowers a flower bird is same and the last one is the mixed if containing both embryonic leaves and flowers so types of the birds these are the types of the birds apical or terminal. You can see in apical or terminal bird, it includes the axillary or lateral bird. So this is the axil, this is leaf, this is stem, and this is petiole as shown in the figure. Types of the birds includes the different types of the birds. So this is stem. This is axillary bird and this is leaf. This is terminal bird and this is axillary bird. In the second figure, you can see that these are bird scales and this is a, a terminal bird, which includes the axillary bird. This is internaut, this is knot, and these are bird skulls. And this is lenticels, as shown in the figure. Types of the birds, these are terminal birds as shown in the figure because they are present at the tip of the plant. This is axillary bird because they are present in the axle of the leaf or in the axle of any branch. So these are axillary birds. Types of the birds also include the adventitious birds. So these are adventitious bird on stem and these are adventitious bird on root as shown in the figure. So types of the birds also includes the accessory birds. So these are accessory birds as shown in the figure. So the next type of the bird is the resting birds. You can see in this figure very clearly these are resting birds as shown in the figure. So types of the birds also includes the dormant birds. So these are dormant birds as shown in the figure. Types of birds also includes the pseudo-terminal birds 
and these are pseudo terminal buds as shown in the figure types of the birds also includes the scaly birds so these are scaly birds as shown in the figure types of the birds also includes the naked birds so these are naked birds as shown in this figure types of the birds also includes the heavy birds so these are heavy birds you can see in this figure types of birds also includes vegetative birds so these are vegetative birds as shown in this figure types of birds includes the reproductive birds so these are reproductive birds as shown in the figure types of the birds includes the mixed birds so these are mixed birds which includes the young leaf and flower bird as shown in this figure next i am going to discuss about the forms of stem so stem may be aerial subaerial or underground aerial stems are usually upright they are erect or weak erect upright aerial stem may be branched or unbranched the unbranched erect and stout cylindrical stem having the scars and remnants of the fallen leaves is called as the codex it is formed in palms in bamboos the stem is jointed it has hollow inner nodes and solid prominent nodes such a jointed stem is called as the clomb in a few monocots with the underground stems the aerial shoots develop only for bearing the flowers a leafless shoot bearing the flowers is called as the scape and examples are onion aroids and banana weak aerial stems are either twiners or climbers subaerial stems are usually prostrate toward the ground they include the trailers and creepers in creepers the prostrate stems roots at intervals and they are mainly of three types which are runners stolons and offsets most workers include the suckers also in the category of creepers because their prostrate stems may be at the level of ground commonly the stems are rigid erect and grow above the ground and are exposed to air they may be reduced for example in the form of small green structures above the roots as in radish carrot and in and erect for example thick and strong and can grow erect exposing the leaves to air as in trees most herbs shrubs etc and weak for example unable to grow erect and expose their leaves to air and light by climbing up the objects next is the climbing or by spreading themselves on the ground prostrate and in some cases as in grasses the stem rises obliquely upwards from near the base ascending so following are the forms of the stem first form of the stem is aerial stem such a stem remains outside the surface of the soil second is the erect stem it grows straight upright without any kind of spot above the surface of the soil third type is the weak stem it is un it is incapable of growing the straight upright and under the natural conditions trail on the surface of the soil or climb with the help of some sport next are the climbers these are the weak stems which climb with the assistant of assistance of the tendrils hooks spines prickles roots etc and for example in the pea passion flower and vine etc next is the twiner such weak stems ascend by coiling around some spot for example in d a 
hypomia, palmata, and they lie and grow prostrately on the surface of the soil. For example, in the potulaca, evalvulus, etc. The trailing stems may be decumbent. For example, when a trailing stem tends to raise, rise at the apex or diffuse. For example, when it branches profusely and spreads out on the surface of the soil. And the next type is the creepers. These stems creep on the ground by various means and accordingly may be runner, stolon, offset or sucker. So fourth type is reduced stem. Sometimes the stem is reduced to an exceedingly small remnant persisting at the upper end of the root. For example, in carrots, turnips and radishes, etc. Fifth type or form of the stem is underground modified stems. Except when the roots or leaves are fleshy and especially modified for food storage, the stem is usually the chief organ in which the food is stored. And some stems are specially modified for the storage of food and these are usually underground stems such as the rhizomes of the ginger and tubers of the potatoes or the corns of the aeroids. So next I am going to discuss the forms of weak stem. Forms of weak stem. The plants with weak stems may be climbers. These are the plants which have weak stems and they expose their leaves to sunlight by climbing up the spot, either by coiling round it or by developing the special structures. Next type is the creepers. These are the plants in which the branches are horizontal and trail parallel to the soil surface. From the nodes, adventitious roots arise which fix the plant into the soil. The birds present in the axles of scale leaves at nodes develop into aerial shoot. For example, in the cyanodon dactylon, which is also known as grass. So third type is the trailers. These plants resemble the creepers in having the weak stems which trail or run along the ground. But these do not produce daughter plants. For example, in the bacilla. Forms of the weak stem. So this is a climber as shown in the figure. Forms of the weak stem also include a creeper as shown in the figure. Forms of weak stem also include a trailer as shown in the figure. So next I am going to discuss the forms of the climbers. According to the mode of climbing, they are divided into first type is twiners. They have long stems which coil or twine round the spot. The apex of the stem turns round and mutates in a circle and when this mutating shoot comes in contact with an erect spot, it coils round it in an ascending spiral manner. Such stems are found in hope, homulus, and convolvulus, ipomia cascuta. Next type is tendril climbers. They develop the long structure which is called tendrils by means of which they climb up the spot. When the apical portion of the tendril touches a spot, it twines round it. The tendril may be modification of stems, leaves or stipules. They are found in vine, which is also known as the vetus, passion flower and cucurbita. So third type is root climbers. They attach themselves to the spot by developing the small adventitious roots which arise from the side of the stem where it comes in contact with the spot as in ivy, paper, and vanilla, etc. Fourth type is the hook climber. They climb up the producing by usually the recurved bent backward hooks, as in the wild rose and bougainvillea, etc. 
So forms of the climbers includes the twiners, include the examples of hope, which is also known as the homulus and convolvulus. And the next example is the ipomia and cuscuta as shown in the figure. Forms of the climbers also include the tendril climbers and tendril climbers include the examples of wine which is also known as vitis, passion flower and cucurbita as shown in the figure. Forms of climbers include the root climbers which include the examples of ivy, paper and vanilla as shown in the figure. Forms of climbers include the hook climbers which include the examples of wild, wild rose and this is the bougainvillea as shown in the figure. If you like my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon as well for further notifications and information. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your time and appreciation.